join us now for Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated, founded in 1928 by evangelist Paul Levine and dedicated to getting the gospel of Jesus Christ to the whole world. Here today with a special message from God's Word is Mark Smith. Mark is the director of Bible Tracts Incorporated. And now, our Bible teacher, Mark Smith. Hello, my dear friend. Thank you for joining us here on another week of broadcast with Bible Tract Echoes. As Pastor Ken has announced, I'm Mark Smith. I'm the director of Bible Tracts, and it's my privilege to bring to uh, together you, me, and the Word of God every day. And thank you for the privilege of opening the Word of God with you. Today, I have my Bible open to Psalm 88. Psalm 88, the saddest psalm of all scripture. Yeah, the saddest psalm of all scripture. We're getting ready for that. If you have the chance to open your Bible, please do that. In uh, the process of this broadcast, I want you to know that we really do want to put into your hands tools, gospel tracks, some tools to help you communicate the gospel to those that are lost around you. At the end of the broadcast, Pastor Ken will be giving our mailing address. In just a moment, I'm going to be giving the telephone number and our, the, the address of our website, if that's something you like to use. Uh, but we'd like to put into your hands a sample packet of our English tracts. We here at Bible Tracts, we print gospel tracts in different languages and send them out literally all over the world. And we just have the privilege of helping God's workers lead countless souls to Christ uh, every year. And the the track that uh, will be, the the track I really want to emphasize today is the highlight track of our whole ministry. It's called the New Birth, written by our founder, Dr. Paul Levine. We have more people come to Jesus Christ through this track than any other. I think it is the greatest gospel track ever written. Now. The New Birth Track, that's the title of it, goes into some real clarity about what it, the New Birth is and is not. The word New Birth, the Greek word in John chapter 3 means born from above. My friend, you have a physical birth. To get to heaven, you need a spiritual birth. Your physical birth makes you alive physically. To be alive spiritually, you must have a heavenly birth, a new birth. This track will explain it. If you are a relatively new Christian, this is a great track to help you clarify uh, what has happened to you and give you the ability to make it clearer when you tell those around you what has happened to you when you ask Jesus to be your Savior. As I said, Pastor Ken's going to be giving the mailing address. Right now, let me give you the telephone number, and I'm going to give you the website. Any of these three ways will work to get in contact with our office free of charge. We want to give you this sample packet of tracks. Why don't you contact us? You can telephone us at area code 309-828-6888. I'm going to give that telephone number one more time. Are you ready? Area code 309 309- 828-6888. If you are connected to the World Wide Web, you can contact us at our website, www.bibletracksinc.org. Inc. is I-N-C, short for incorporated. That's the name of our ministry. Okay, that address again is www.bibletracksinc.org. All right, I come here to Psalm 88, the saddest psalm of all. If you have your Bible open and you look at the heading between where it says Psalm 88 and verse 1, there's probably in your Bible some words in there to help you understand uh, how this psalm was to be used when it was originally given. One of the words in there is the word maskil. This is the 11th of 13 psalms with that title in it. The word maskil means it's a teaching or instructional psalm. But it is, as I said, the saddest of all. There is no light. By light, I mean there is no real hope given in this at a cursory reading. As we come here, we're going to find that the writer, whoever the human penman is, is in great gloom and in despair, and the despair seems to increase as the psalm progresses. As a matter of fact, the very last word of the psalm is the word darkness, and that probably gives you a hint about the tone of the psalm. But now, as we, I'm going to read the psalm, uh, all 18 verses here in a moment, 
But if you will keep in mind, many Bible scholars, and I think they're probably right, many Bible scholars think that the person who was the human penman moved by the Spirit of God to write this had the physical calamity of leprosy on their life. And as I read that and you listen to that, uh, if you'll keep that in mind, it will help you grasp why the despair is there and why he says some of the things he says. Psalm 88, verse 1. O Lord God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Incline thine ear unto my cry, for my soul is full of troubles. For my life draweth nigh to the grave. I am counted with them that go down to the pit. I am a man that hath no strength. Free among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from the land, from thy hand. Thou hast laid me in the lowest pit, in darkness, in the deeps. Thy wrath lieth hard upon me, and thou hast afflicted me with all thy waves, Selah. That was put mine, uh, away mine acquaintances far from me. That was made me an abomination unto them. I am shut up. I cannot go forth. Mine eye mourneth by reason of the affliction. O Lord, I have uh, called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hand unto thee. Wilt thou show wonders to the dead? Shall the dead arise and praise thee? Selah. Shall thy loving kindness be declared in the grave, or thy faithfulness in destruction? Shall thy wonders be known in the dark, and thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? But unto thee have I cried, O Lord, and in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. Lord, why castest thou off my soul? Why hidest thou thy face from me? I am afflicted and ready to die from my youth up. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. Thy fierce wrath goeth over me. Thy terrors have cut me off. They came round about me daily like water. They compassed me about together. Lover and friend hath, hast thou put far from me and mine acquaintances into darkness. Wow. You begin to see why this is often called the saddest psalm of all. My friend, despair is overwhelmingly the tone of the writer's uh, feeling and emotions here. This is a very honest psalm. It's a psalm of despair, a psalm of loneliness, a psalm where the person is almost a tone of hopelessness, hopelessness which is really what despair is a reference to. My friend, it is possible for godly people to have life come overshadow them and over, overrun them, and they feel despair. That's a real issue in, in real life people. Now, does life have to do that? No. But my friend, you and I are made of dirt. That's what Psalm 103 says. God knows our frame that we are but what? That's right. We're but dust. God knows that and he treats us accordingly and he allows us to have moments of great joy and exhilaration and moments of despair because sometimes life just knocks our legs out from underneath us. That's what's going on here. Now, this is a teaching psalm, okay? It's a mictum. It's, it's a teaching psalm. What are we supposed to learn from this despair? How to be in despair? <laughs> I don't think so. My friend, uh, today, and if it need to spill over to tomorrow, we want to grasp that you and I, we may face despair. We may feel like that you and I are hopeless. Just this, as I make this, this is a Monday, as I make this, it's uh, not the Monday that you're listening to it, but I'm making this on a Monday, and over the weekend I read something that said, and uh, pardon me, this cuts uh, across into your life, but there's an issue in an article dealing with the whole subject of abortion. And the article said, and I don't know that that the, they can, that the facts have been verified, but I'm going to take the facts that were stated as being accurate, that one in six abortions happens to people that call themselves a born-again Christian. Now, they did not define that and so on, but I'm just going to say this, that sometimes godly people can get backed into a corner seemingly by life circumstances and they feel like there's no way out, that God, even almighty God, cannot help them and they must do some things that they know in the depth of their soul is not right, but they feel like they've got no other way out. That is despair. My friend, what do we tell somebody like that? What do we tell somebody like that? Begin to march your way through this psalm with me. I'm going to begin to use some words that begin with the letter A to help me through through this. Verses 1 and 2 talk about the penman's actions. His action is prayer. Verse 1 and 2. 
O Lord God of my salvation, I have cried, there's that prayer, day and night before thee, let my prayer, there's the word, come before thee, incline thine ear unto my cry. This idea of prayer is not just here in verses 1 and 2. Verse 9 says, Mine eye mourneth by reason of my affliction. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. Look at verse 13. But unto thee I cried, O Lord, and in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee, go before thee. My friend, this person is praying in times of despair. May I politely say that no one ever prays when they feel like their prayer will do nothing. This person may be in a despairing time, but they are not a person who feels like there is no hope at all. You know why? They're praying. A person who thinks there is no hope and no way out will just give up and they will not pray. My friend, you need to pray in despair. This writer believes there is hope. Do you believe in the midst of what you're going through right now that there is hope? You may be going through this and you're a parent and one of your children who was raised up in godliness and righteousness, who's made a profession of faith, is way off into sin and you're really questioning their salvation. Well, okay, maybe you ought to, but you feel like, boy, what have I done wrong? Have I failed? Well, that's not perhaps a bad question to ask, but sometimes... Good kids raised up in in good families just decide they're going to live and and throw off the traces and live an ungodly life. They have a human will, and they invest it in ungodliness, and it breaks your heart, and you wonder, is there ever any hope? My friend, my parent friend, pray. You may be in a financial strait, and you think there's no hope. You can pray because the God of heaven who moved heaven and earth, who made a dry path out of the Red Sea, is your God if you know him as Savior. His action is prayer. Verses, uh, verse 1 and 2, notice his address. He addresses the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Not only does he use it here in verse 1, O Lord God, he uses it other times in the psalm. He uses it in verse 9, mine eye, uh, mine eye mourneth by reason of affliction. Lord, Jehovah, that's what the term is. When In our King James Bible, when the Bible translates the word Lord by all four letters being capitalized, that's the Hebrew word Jehovah here. Verse 14 says this, Lord, Jehovah, he uses it here. Why? You say, Brother Mark, why is that significant? I submit to you that the names of God are very significant. They help describe to us and get across to us in a, with a more effectiveness his character and his person. The word Jehovah was used to describe the covenant-making nature of God, that God makes covenants and promises with his own, and God Almighty keeps his word. God cannot lie. Oh, my gracious friend, my beloved friend, if you're in despair, may say to you that if you know Christ as as your Savior, he is the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, and he's made a covenant with you, an unconditional covenant made by the shedding of blood at the cross. He will never leave you nor dis, uh, forsake you, and you need to cry out to him in your despair. My friend, if you're in despair and you do not know Jesus Christ as Savior, you are in dire need of a Lord that will make a covenant relationship with you and help you. Perhaps God has brought you to this despair point that you might cry out to him to be saved. Amen. We're glad you've joined us today for Bible Tract Echoes. Be sure to send your letter of encouragement today, or you may request Bible Tracts. Simply write us at Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. That's Bible Tracts Incorporated, Post Office Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. And thank you for being with us today on Bible Tract Echoes. May God richly bless you.